Hey YouTube, welcome to the We All Juggle Knives channel. This is going to be my review of the Cold Steel Warcraft Tanto. Going over the features of this knife and just offering my personal opinions on the knife. If you want to see this knife doing things, check out my previous videos. Uh, my last video, this knife is used against some meat because it is a sold as a fighting knife, so I demonstrate the gruesome effects on a piece of meat from the butchers, and I'll include a link to that. The previous video before that, this knife does a static cut of three bottles, so if you want to check that out, go ahead. All right, now let's get into this blade. The blade length is about, well, if you measure it from about right there, to the tip, seven and a half inches. If you measure from the beginning of the edge to the tip, that's uh, slightly less than seven inches. Now the steel on this is 3V, all right, crucible 3V steel, which if you don't know, is a super steel, what's called a super steel. Uh, very hot right now in the cutlery industry, especially for fixed blades. And it, it's basically prized for its edge retention. All right, now let's check out the construction of this knife. G10 handle scales. A true full tang. You have texture here. A very deep finger groove here. Very integral guard. Pinky ramp. Gives an excellent grip in the hammer grip. The finish on this knife is a DLC coating, also known as a diamond-like coating. That coating is far more durable than the Teflon coating that you might uh, see on some of Cold Steel's uh, less expensive blades. So I definitely like that coating. And uh, let me see if I can show you some of the wear and tear. Oh, there you go. Right there. A tiny bit of wear and tear. Yes, I have stabbed this into lots of just pieces of wood and things like that, as well as through bones in the meat test. You can see those little specks right there. That's the only visible wear and tear, right, that showed up on the coating. Just a few tiny specks. Okay, so this holds up very well. And of course, I have washed and cleaned and repolished this several times. I scrubbed it very hard obviously because I was cutting raw meat alright so that coating is a superior coating now as for the grind on this right you have your primary bevel here then this grind is flat so you have a flat grind there into your secondary bevel or edge bevel right there and the edge bevel is a good a good ways back from the actual you know, the termination of the edge, right? The edge bevel comes a good way back, right? which is a good thing. Now, the Tanto design has a sub tip, right? And then a secondary grind here. This secondary grind is also a flat grind. Okay, so you're talking primary bevel, an angle change there, and a flat grind and a secondary flat grind. It has good thickness at the spine, right? And you see the profile of the tip there, a very, very pointed and piercing acute tip. As far as the weight of the knife, it is listed as 13 ounces, right? And it does feel a little heavier than that. Those are thick G10 scales, but the point is, less than a pound, and actually quite fast, quite fast in the hand. Um, very agile and maneuverable, which is what you would expect and want from a knife like this, which is sold as a, a combat slash martial arts blade. Now for size reference, I have my USMC K-Bar right here. And as you see, I put these on top of one another, they are almost exactly the same overall length. 
Now, I'm sure that is intentional. The K-Bar, an extremely popular knife for many decades uh, with soldiers, and I'm sure the idea here is, okay, you've got a lot of soldiers and a lot of veterans that are comfortable with a knife of this size, so Cold Steel figures, let's give them a knife in that size range, and maybe if they're more concerned about the combat part instead of the utility part of a military knife, they might choose the Tanto, the Warcraft Tanto. Now let's do a comparison with regards to the design of that Tanto tip and the sub tip. Let's do a comparison with other Tantos out there. Now Cold Steel prefers to give you a more pronounced sub tip on their Tanto designs. Okay, which, which means that right, the, the angle the angle of that part of the edge right, is not going to be as extreme, right? And they do that in order for the sub-tip to be more pronounced. The reason they do that is because if you've seen their videos, they advocate what's called a snap cut, which employs that sub-tip. And a snap cut, which is basically kind of like that, it's kind of a jab. It's, it's a super quick jab right with the sub tip a snap cut obviously works better if the sub tip is more pronounced okay so that is why they design it in that way now some tantos have a completely straight edge uh, for example this smith and wesson model, model 7 the edge on this is completely straight. Right, you see that? I mean, it does angle that way, but there is no curve to the edge. Cold steel usually gives you a little bit of a curve. All right, in this Coben, you clearly see that curve there. In the Warcraft, they also give you an ever so slight curve. That is to facilitate slicing. Uh, the same reason that katana has a curve, a butcher knife has a curve, uh, it's to facilitate slicing. Because as you cut more deeply into a target, because of that curve, the edge is falling away from the target, which forces you uh, to, to push it in more deeply to keep it in contact. And it's that pushing in, but also uh, that slicing motion, right, which is a an elliptical motion, right, that it's basically a very efficient cutting action. Now regarding that pronounced sub-tip, that's usually referred to as an Americanized or American Tanto because the original Japanese Tantos upon which this knife is based, this is a James Williams uh, Hisatsu fixed blade, and this is based uh, on, on Japanese designs, okay, because James Williams is a, a, a teacher and instructor in Japanese blade arts. So he designed it. This is a tanto, but it is the more traditional Japanese shaped tanto. You can see the difference there. This is basically much more specialized towards thrusting and towards slicing, but not towards the snap cut that we previously mentioned. Now there are American Tantos that are also more pointed essentially. Uh, this is the Smith & Wesson 7. It's also oriented more towards the thrust, not really towards the snap cut. And when we overlay um, the cold steel version over this, you can clearly see the difference in angle of that part of the edge. All right, maybe, hold on. Right, hopefully, you can see what I'm talking about there. You can see that there. This type of Tanto is just designed to be more pointed overall. And it is the same story with this Benchmade Rant. You see how much more right, angled that part of the edge is. 
you see the difference here. So this is still pointed, right? But that angle of that part of the edge is nowhere near as extreme because this is not really made for a snap cut necessarily or specialized toward it. It's made for piercing, maybe a drawing cut, right? But this is clearly designed to facilitate the snap cut. Here is the sheath of the Warcraft Tanto. Now this is Secure X, right, which is very similar basically to Kydex. Is this a good sheath? Overall, yes. For one, it, it's fitted to the knife. It, it's not loose, it does not rattle and make noise. It's not overly bulky. It doesn't have like 10 extra pockets for your entire mess kit on it. It doesn't have a huge number of straps and every other crazy thing. It doesn't have an overflap. It has one retaining strap with a button closure, right? Horizontal strap. That is not needed. And what I mean by that, I mean it's good to have, but this will stay in the sheath. It will stay in the sheath, even upside down, without that, right? This collar basically locks it in. This is the belt loop here. Now the belt loop can be opened. You see there's Velcro there and a button closure. So you don't have to thread it through. You could, it basically makes for rapid on and off of this. You could also, you could also strap this to things. That's why those slots and eyelets are there. You can lash it to your hip. You can lash it to a pack, however you want. So it is a good sheath as far as deployment. The deployment is good. It's, it doesn't get stuck in there. Uh, it's just tight enough, you know, that it holds it in, but not so tight that you're going to struggle with it at all. all. Right. So I definitely, I definitely like the quality of this sheath. Now this is sold as a fighting blade, a combat blade, a fighting knife, a tactical knife. So we have to address that issue. Could it be used as such? Obviously yes. Obviously yes. But is it ideal? You know, before I get into this topic, I just got to go over my checklist, okay? Before you think about entering into hand-to-hand -hand combat with blades, you need to ask yourself several questions. Number one, how athletic are you overall? What Your speed, your strength, your hand-eye coordination, okay? Your, your awareness of your body. What's your reaction time? How good is your balance? How good is your footwork? Do you have the footwork of a pro fighter, like a boxer, where you can go in and out and maneuver? All right, what about precision? Can you hit what you aim at? All right, um, what about your timing? What about your ranging? That's the knowledge of effective weapons at each range and how to keep at the ideal range, okay? So, you know. If you have balance, coordination, reaction time, precision, hand-eye coordination, all the tools of essentially a pro fighter, well, heck, if you have all those tools, I don't even want to fight you barehanded, let alone if you have a knife. And if you do have all those tools, which are essentially the tools of a pro fighter, then as long as your knife doesn't break, you should be pretty devastating with any knife, let alone a knife that's pretty good at thrusting and slicing and snap cutting. So the short answer, well, you know, this knife will do its part if you do your part, you know. If you don't have those skills, then I, I, I just you just have to pray that your enemy doesn't have them either, okay, because it's, it's not about the equipment as long as the equipment doesn't break. This ain't gonna break, look at it dude, it's, it's full tang. The 3V steel is a very high quality steel. So, short answer, this could absolutely be used as a quite effective weapon if you do your part. Now is it ideal? Is it the best? <laughs> well, you know, like I said, the knife doesn't do the fighting. You better be doing it, but is it ideal? 
Well, it, it's very good for thrusting, I'll give it that. It's very good for slicing. The snap cut is a useful trick. Not always, you know, not, not necessary, but definitely something in the toolbox. Um, I mean, this would be compatible with most with most knife systems out there. Uh, reverse grip, it works in the reverse grip too. The only thing you really can't do is hold it with the edge in because the handle's not designed for that. But every other thing you would want to do with a knife, yeah, it would serve. I'm sure people are going to say, is, the tr is a 3V steel overkill? I mean, do you really need a super steel for a fighting blade? Well, no, you don't. But remember, if they're selling this to soldiers, a soldier uses his knife for all kinds of things. You know, the hand-to-hand -hand aspect is, is pretty much the last resort, the, the least likely, you know, it, it could happen. But for 99% of the time, soldier's going to use his knife for anything that a, that a workman, that a technician, or that a camper would use their knife for. So there is benefit in giving you a really good steel with high edge retention uh, to a soldier and also just regular people. You might buy this as, as a martial arty weapon, but it's also nice that you can use it as a camping knife. Me personally, I would not prefer a tanto tip for a camping knife, but I understand if you have the knife anyway, hey, just for fun, you could use it and uh, yeah I mean it, it would serve so it is nice to have the good steel the good steel also just makes it more collectible it gives it a higher resale value it helps it retain that resale value just makes it an overall better investment so is that steel needed uh, to terminate an enemy soldier no but is that steel desirable for all those other reasons yes as far as the grind itself with that bevel here, you know, very thick, kind of chunky, right? Um, it is a very strong, it's definitely a very strong type of grind. It is a little chunky, you know, even, it, it's not the best if you just want to slice bottles, although I did quite well with it, but a, a thinner knife with a full flat grind would go through them better. But as far as flesh, which I've also cut with it in video, yeah, I mean, devastating against flesh. You know, that bevel is not going to slow you down at all. And the bottom line is that that grind, that extra metal, that extra mass above that primary bevel definitely makes the knife extremely strong. So yeah, it gives you strength and does not take away from the combat part at all. Okay, quite a long review, but I trust it was educational. You know, this is one of Cold Steel's uh, knives that is using a superior steel. You know, a lot of their other knives use OS 8, all right? So they're getting into super steels now. So I thought this knife, I think this knife is worthy, right, of a longer, more a detailed review and that's what I have tried to do. Now also, uh, this review would not have happened without KnifeHog.com because they provided this knife for me to show to you. All right, KnifeHog.com is an online cutlery store. I'll include a link to their YouTube page where they have videos and a link, you know, if you are shopping for cutlery, which you probably are, check them out. My final thoughts on this knife. The coating they use is superior, the steel they use is superior, the ergonomics are very good. It's an incredibly strong design, just the full tang and that the thickness of the blade and that that bevel and the flat grind, um, the rather broad uh, secondary grind on the sub and the sub tip. It is a very strong knife. It's a very high quality knife. The sheath was done right. So yeah, it is actually, uh, it's, it's worth the price. I mean, even if you were just thinking of it as a collectible, the steel alone, right, that, that steel alone is very good. I have a Strider fixed blade that was significantly more expensive than this, and that more ex expensive Strider 
uses that same steel. So even just from a collectability standpoint, it's good. From a usability standpoint, it's good. If all you wanted was a fighting blade, you know, you wouldn't, you could get by with something much cheaper, obviously, if all you wanted was a fighting blade. So I can't say it would be great if you're on a budget. All right, so overall, hard to, hard to find any fault with it. You know, if, if you're not interested in this, it's probably just because of the size. You know, a lot of people um, just don't have a, a need or opportunity or use to carry a fixed blade of this size. All right, but that's not the fault of the knife. The same company offers a wide range of smaller knives, folding knives for those people. All right, so overall, yes, it, it is a solid knife. I would, if I had to rate this knife, I'd give it a solid A minus. Hope you enjoyed the video. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.